for the newcomers coming in this small Gulf country under what we call the work visa sponsorship. Is it worth it coming to Qatar? Is it worth it working in Qatar? Tune into this video until the end as we try to see a couple of things. We shall look at coming to Qatar and arriving to Qatar. We shall also look at the contracts. We shall look at the salary, payments and other benefits. We shall look at the transportation. We shall look at the accommodation. We shall look at the health insurance. Then we shall also look at food. Welcome back to this channel and if it's your first time to come across this channel, consider subscribing. Support by subscribing to this channel. The returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back to this channel. And for the new subscribers, thank you so much for coming to this channel. Thank you support. By the way, don't forget to like, share and comment in the comment section. I'll always be more than happy to get back to you. My name is Max from The Max Creation. Welcome to this channel. In today's video, is it worth it working in Qatar or is it a good idea working in Qatar? Then, if that's the cause, is it worth it moving to Qatar as a new job seeker? Let us look at into this video and see what exactly you need to know about Qatar. We shall look at the contracts. First of all, we shall look at coming to Qatar and arriving to Qatar. Then we shall look at the contracts. We shall look at the salary. We shall look at the transportation. We shall look at the accommodation, the health insurance and food. Let's go straight into the video. One. Coming to Qatar is one, one first stage that everyone would consider. We are looking at a scenario or situation whereby you already issued with a visa. You've already gone through what you call the SCAPI interview. You've already given the job offer and the ticket and visa being provided to you or given to you. You're only waiting for that date that you'll be boarding the plane to come. Yes, you are waiting for that time to board the plane to come. But how well are you prepared? What are you supposed to pack? What are you supposed to put in your suitcase? And what are you supposed not to pack? That is also a very good thing to consider as you are planning to come to this Gulf country. Remember, this is a Muslim country and there are some items that are being prohibited to be carried into their country. And all well good that you cannot even pass the, what we call the immigration once you have these items that are being prohibited in this country. So, as you're planning to come to this Gulf country, one of the things you should be considered as you are packing your items, you should know what is allowed to be packed and what is not allowed to pack. For your safety, I think that is very recommendable that you check out a list of the items. For example, if you're planning to carry alcohol, is it allowed? No, it's not allowed. If, you're, uh, if you want to carry religious books, is it allowed? It's not allowed. It's one of the items that are prohibited. Then also, look at what you're going to put as your clothing. Remember, what we need to know is a Muslim country. What are you preparing as your casual, your casual wear clothes? Remember, in all situations at the workplace, you'll be, in, you'll be, uh, you'll be only accepted to wear, to wear what we call company uniforms because they'll be provided to you by that company that you're going to work to. But we are looking at a situation where you have your day off, your casual day off, what are you supposed to put in the public? What you're putting in, is it allowed by the government or is it allowed by the customs or the religious customs of the country? That also has so much to be considered why to avoid scenarios of trouble and to avoid scenarios of any sort of any complaint in one way or the other. So as you are parking, try to check out what are the list of the items that are being required or are allowed to be parked. And if you are parking, park what is actually moderate that can be that is all within what is given by your baggage your baggage allowances on the plane don't pack that is excess that you're going to get out of uh, um, the immigration office that you're going to throw as you they're trying to check your luggage pack something that is required that is required of you that is one step so most of the time people forget that they're coming to what you call a muslim country and they end up packing whatever sorts of items that they want but remember 
I told you one thing that you need to know and one thing you need to remember. Coming to some of these countries, coming to a foreign country, it is what we call this, what we call uh, a, a privilege and a responsibility. Privilege is that you're given that visa and the responsibility is that you need to adhere and follow the rules and regulations that concern the labor laws in that country. In section, in number two, let us look at arriving in Qatar. What are you supposed to do? It is your first time to come in Qatar. It is your first time to get that visa to come to work outside your home country. Then you are arriving at the immigration. You are cleared of the immigration. You are now in the immigration department at the airport in Qatar. What are you supposed to do? What is required of you? Yes, the responsibility, you have the passport, you prove the passport, you are crossing over now from the immigration, you are cleared to enter Qatar. That is the exit side. What is expected of you? What are you supposed to do as one, as one of the requirements or some of the roles that your responsibility has to do as wannabe or a person who is coming in the country for the first time? I'll just recommend the first thing is that as you're trying to pack whatever items you pack from your country, have what we call an excess amount of money with you. It is always very important. And normally the very precise way or the very good way that you can do that, you can have a little bit of some dollars with you for an exchange. You can have something like around $50 or even $100 if you can afford. Because it is the only way that is going to get you out of the hassle and the stresses as you enter or as you go to the exit or as you come into the country. Remember, we are talking about the first time you come into this country. You are so green with what is being done in the country. You are done with the procedure. And this is now the platform that I'm trying to let you know what you can do the first time. Yes, you are clear to exit wherever you have to go. Remember, in some situations, you need to buy what you call a sim line. You'll buy a sim line. Leave alone the sim line that you've been using in your country because that one can be used for WhatsApp. But remember, you need to have what you call a, like a caller sim line where you need to use to access what you call the local calls. And what does it need, need you to access that sim line? You'll need what you call your passport. Why am I saying this at the first time? Because you remember, as you go to your company or as you go to your company office to sign up a contract that you got at one way or the other, they will need to withdraw your passport out from you. Meaning that you cannot access, you cannot buy any SIM line at that time unless you have a passport with you because it is one of the requirements for you to register for the SIM line. So I would advise the first time you drop the airport, have some dollar with you, buy the SIM line use your passport as Richard says, such that by the time your employer withdraws the, pa the passport from you for medical, uh, card printing, and uh, uh, probation period, you definitely have the visa, you have the same line that you can access your family, you can call a friend, and you can definitely find more information with you. But remember, you cannot just buy a line minus either your ID or your passport. They will definitely need to take that part because that line sim line that you're going to buy is one that is going to be used to be attached to most of the documents that are being required of, of you in processing in the country so that is also very very important at one time so now let us look at number two we are looking at signing the contracts most of us will get in trouble as signing the contracts remember when a job offer is given to you in your country of origin there is also a copy of contract that you are supposed to sign in your country. That accepts that you've accepted the job offer. You've accepted the money. You are going to work for that money and it's enough for you. You've accepted the accommodation allowance. You've accepted the food. You are ac accept you accepted to adhere to what the company rules are in that country. So what do you need to do? As rich in Qatar, remember the first place that you have to go is the office or the office that belongs to that company that you're going to work to and remember the same office you'll have to sign another 
copy of the contract. But remember, as you try to sign the contract, read the terms and the condition, the terms that are being fostered or are being written in that contract. Make sure that that contract does not contradict the contract that you signed as you are coming to the country. If your country mentioned a contract limited of two years, that is a limited contract, it should be matching the same contract you're signing in this office for a period of two years. If you sign for the duty of nine hours, let it be the same contract, same version contract that you sign as you are in your country. That is why it is normally very important for you that you take a close analysis of that contract terms before you get to sign. Otherwise, you may fall a victim of your own when you don't know after some time. Remember, you came on a limited contract which is a two year. But you come into the country, the employer gives you another copy of the contract and it is written on unlimited contract. And for that situation, you are so excited that you already got a job, but remember, you sign a contract which is contradicting with the contract of the limited, and now you are signing what you call an unlimited contract. What does it mean? That means from the two years, you are assigning another contract of five years, which is unlimited contract. And what does it mean at that time? That you cannot change job unless you, see you, you finish up the five years with your employer. As per the, the requirement in the Katali Balu, it gives the employer a right for that. Even if you get a bigger opportunity, you will not, you'll not go for it. Because you are being infringed until you finish the five years. That is when you can, you can cross over and go to get another job. So probably in those contracts, you must be a little bit very careful as a son in the contract. Understand the rules. Interpret each and every term in that contract. Brightly, safely, slowly, with no pressure. Then you can put your fingerprint or your thumbnail or you can put what you call your signature. So that is also very important in one way or the other. In two, number three, we are going to look at we are going to look at the salary. What salary did you expect to get? Have uh, the company agreed to give you the amount that you accepted for? Yes. If then, what is the mode of payment? And what actual date are you going to be paid that money? That is very important. Some of us will get to underestimate that. But the mode of payment also matters. And the date of payment also matters to us. That is part of what should be in the contract. But you can still ask. You can still ask. Because some companies on arrival, they will give you, they will give you, they will give you some amount of money. Which they say, for example, they will give you around 300 or 200 for use for the salt as the math try to progress. Then after, they will begin deducting from the end of the month as you're being paid your full salary. But you should be that in mind, should be that you are aware of that and you should know how much is being deducted. Such that the proper calculations comes to you when you are calculating your monthly money or your monthly salary that this is amount that will be deducted as the time I lived here and this is how much I'm supposed to get. That is totally very important and it's very a good ingredient that you normally have to ask and be aware and how much. If your employer accepted for you to work nine hours and is giving you 800 at this time you worked and is giving you 1600 why you should be very careful and i should know why this is happening or why he has to abstract this because of this because of this and because of this such that you are partially aware of what is going on with the, your salary and you can really sit down and trace then number four we look at what we call transportation transportation is also uh, something that you need to consider. Remember, we are coming from our home countries and we are coming to this country to work. What do you expect? You do not expect to have a private car for yourself. No. You expect to, to, to move from your area of accommodation to the work by what we call by what we call but what we call a company car, a company vehicle. So what does it mean that you have to adhere to the rules? Not coming late, yes, adhere to the rules because you are losing what you call a company vehicle and you, that is a public. You are not only the person that is inside that car. There are very many other people like you, same like you, that are using the same van. So you should be very, very tactical and very careful 
as you try because in my, what what really very expensive it gets with the transport here in Qatar is that if you're trying to use the private modes means you definitely have to spend but if the company under your contract said the transportation allowance should be uh, given to you then probably take that opportunity and use the transport allowance that's been given by the company otherwise uh, to stop what you call wastage on spending of the unnecessary uh, budgets that you are not agreed to still another one is uh, number five we look at accommodation remember as we come some of you married some of you sleeping mushrooms wherever you're coming from from your country but remember this is the place that you are coming to work and you're going to come to work with uh, nationalities people from nationalities so for uh, people different nationalities and people from different countries and what does it mean at that stage is that you'll have what you call shared accommodation you find where in some possible ways that in the room you are sleeping eight people if you are so lucky and unlucky or if you're unlucky at that time you even sleep 12 people in a room depending on depending on how the company does its cost benefit uh, calculation of its uh, calculation of, of saving their expenses then if you are so lucky enough you'll find yourself a bigger room where you are sleeping you are sleeping for people you have the washing machine laundry is done for you and uh, uh, you know uh, kitchen gas is provided to you kitchen is very clean your corridors are being cleaned, and everything done in the manner that accepts you to live in that environment if you are so lucky but that those companies were definitely they were not true so as you come make sure there is what you call expectation versus reality so when you find that what you expect is not the reality or the reality now is contradicting with your expectation then only you only have to organize yourself and come back to normal and begin knowing your own role your goals your term vision that you should enable you to move and move to another profession other than making alarm all the time Remember, some accommodations, some business, some companies, they will provide washing machines to their company and uh, to their company employees to even doing laundry for them at one moment of time. Uh, so, but remember, those are few companies depending on which kind of job you're coming to do. Maybe you're a cleaner, you're a security guard, you're a plumber, you're a technician in any form or format. But remember, those will be a few instances in one way or the other. Another one we look at what you call health insurance. Do you remember, health insurance is also very important right now as you come, and this should be uh, not only uh, uh, it may not be a, 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 a privilege, but it is what you call a responsibility of you because most of the companies here in Qatar do not care about what you call health. So what does it mean? For you to access what you call the public health systems, you need to have what you call a healthy card. And remember. That health card is only achieved after you, you serving what you call the probation period and your fingerprints and you pass the medical. When you get your cut ID, then what you call the residence permit, then probably you can also, your employer can also access for you what you call health card. But in case your employer does not mind about you accessing your health card or does not print a health card for you, you can still print the card out yourself. Uh, to avoid any inconvenience in case you get an emergency where you need to go to a hospital. So what does it mean at the Gerasa people? It means that you can put an extra role, you can put in an extra responsibility to do that for you. And if it is received, then probably those receipts will be presented to them to make you a refund at whatever situation. So meaning that when you get sick, the better way to save or the better cheaper ways to save here in Qatar is going to what we call public, uh, going to government facilities. Uh, we have here, we have what you call the Hamad Medical Corporation that has a chain of different hospitals in all different towns. So you can access that and you may find it's a little bit cheaper and you can costively get to save on your income that will be excessively spent on other usual business number six uh, number seven we look at food remember 
as you are signing most of those contracts you're signing with those contract days where food will be allowed food will be provided or not provided housing provided or not provided but to know in case food is are provided to your salary that means your employer will not pay what we call the job allowance what we call the food allowance which is the 300 by the stipulated government uh, national national labor law what you call the Qatar government laws that should be given 300 for food allowance but in case that company provides for you food definitely they'll provide food for you and de- depending on which kind of arrangement that is being done or being carried out in that company so probably you'll find yourself eating school food at whatever so eight but if you feel you don't need the food then probably you can try to station yourself target yourself and do something that is a little bit more than that at a given period of time Remember, some companies do provide food and some companies do not provide food for their employers. So definitely, you'll find yourself in that kind of way. I uh, hope I've tried to share something for you for people coming to Qatar. And those things that I've talked about here are quite very, very important. You should take them seriously because it's what makes you feel happy and feel welcome in one or the other. Keep your tickets, keep your passports so strong in a way that no one can access them. Thank you so much for coming back to Seno and thank you so much for subscribing to channel. By the way, don't forget to comment, share in the comment section below if you feel the video is very helpful. Thank you so much. See you again in another video as we try to see more of those interesting videos. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon. It is Mix from the Mix Creation Team. See you again in the next video.